We are so excited to have them here. We are excited to have y'all with us. And they're just going to rock and roll. And I'm going to get out of the way. You got, y'all got, got, got a mic right there as well. Hello? Oh, how are you doing? So this is like a Q&A, so you guys have to have some cues, right? Yeah. All right? If you don't have any questions, what we do in this class is we start with you, and everybody in here has to ask a question. So if you are heroic, and you feel sorry for shy people, raise your hand now. There we go. What's your question? Hello. What's it like having like being a really angry character? It's a lot like real life. <laughs> uh, it's cool. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. It, it's a lot of stress relief. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I voice Bakugo. Um, I hope you all know. But, uh, uh, I know you fun with Brittany, but uh, uh, but I lose my voice a lot. I lose my voice a lot. In voice so, yeah, that's what it's like. Yes. Um, what's it like being being part of so many franchises that have grown to the height they are now? Lucrative. <laughs> it's it's an honor to be a part of all these amazing shows. Uh, although I am not in My Hero Academia anymore. You guys know that. Aww. Speaking of losing your voice, yeah. Uh, Dave Trosco took over the role about halfway through the second season. Yeah, that voice was really easy for me to do when he's talking, but when he started screaming in that voice, it gave me laryngitis and it turned into pneumonia. And, you know, I play Usopp, so that's an easy character. I mean, I could do that for hours, but for some reason, that character just killed me, so I had to stop doing it. Wow. I still sign everybody's posters, though, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting all of you. For Clifford, who is your favorite character in My Hero Academia? Bakugo. <laughs> My top five favorite characters in My Hero Academia are like Bakugo, Kotsky. Gotchan, Game Explosion mur Murder, Lord Explosion Murder. Uh, Brittany, who's your favorite characters on the show? Cammy. <laughs> nah. Uh, I really like Froppy, actually. I really enjoy uh, Froppy. I enjoy anything Monica puts her mind to, but. Um, or her talents too, but I really, really like her Froppy. It's a brand new thing. And I've known her like my whole life, so hearing her play a character so different is really enjoyable for me. I, get, I geek out when my friends impress me with their amazing talent, you know what I mean? Monica never ceases to surprise me. It's like you think, I know her whole life, and then all of a sudden you go, she'll come in a voice and you go, wow, that's totally unlike her. And yeah, like Michiko and Hatchin. I didn't even know that was her, and I've known her since I was 13, and I'm 32. So, like, I did not know it was her. Uh, theater in Houston. Uh, how excited are you for season four? Very. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, I'm really hoping that. I, well, I'm, I'm excited to see new developments, that's all I'm going to say. On that character. Oh, okay. Um, first one. Do you ever think like Bakugo would ever get like a romantic interest? And if you do, what do you think he or he would be like? Ooh, you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I've talked about this a lot, actually. Though I do think. If Bakugo were to ever get a romantic interest, I think it would be a great development for the character um, because Bakugo has always been so focused on himself. So to have someone else that he would focus on or care about or something, I think would be a really interesting direction to take the character. Um, I, whoever they are, they gotta be patient. So, like, they gotta have, they gotta be real calm. 
but uh, you know, it'd have to be somebody who could could handle him being so loud. So. <laughs> somebody probably deaf. <laughs> Um, this one's for Sunny Street. Uh... <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what do you think would happen if Coral Sensei and Friend of Mike would meet? Oh God. Uh, well, there'd be a lot of talking. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, no one else would be able to get a word in, but they would definitely have a competition of who could speak the most. Yeah. 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 Oh, that answer your question. <laughs> Very good. Do we have any other questions? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're the uh, orange man. Uh, for each of y'all, when you first got your character, how did you build your chance to find the voice you wanted to do for that character? I'll start. Um, there's this misogynistic bastard named Tom Likas who's in uh, California. He actually syndicated all over the place. Teaches men how to rip off women and other things. Uh, anyway, his voice though sounded like classic radio, so I basically took his voice and went with it. How about you? Okay. Um, I just tried to be sexy. I don't really have very many sexy characters, and when I auditioned for her, I, I don't know. I well, I feel like Kimmy actually came out sort of sexy, um, but most of the time I just play little girls and little boys and creatures and um not very often do i have someone who's actually sexy so i just like did my best version of what i think people sound like when they're sexy um, and uh used that what i auditioned with when i did the part because i actually recorded it in houston um over source connect so i just had like colleen on like pretty much on the radio yeah um, but yeah <laughs>